On this video of K-Pop RC, we're gonna be building my cinema rig specifically for RC videos, and it's going to be epic. Yo, welcome to K-Pop RC, the channel where I make sick videos of scale models, pretty much anything that's got a remote. So, don't forget to sub up for giveaways and sick ass RC content. Sometimes there's fire. If you haven't been subscribed to K-Pop RC for long, then check out the back catalog of videos on the YouTube channel. Um, there you will see that I am definitely one of those creators that takes a lot of pride in what I shoot and what I edit. <laughs> The first camera that I had on K-Pop RC was the HVX200. It was a Panasonic camera. It had a built-in lens. It had a manual zoom, so you could do those Bruce Lee zooms. But uh, the, biggest, the biggest reason for buying that camera was the variable frame rate. You could shoot 96 frames per second, and it would package that 96 frames per second into 23.97 frames and it basically created slow-mo. It was three times slower than real time. which is huge at the time. This is 10 years ago. 10 years ago, you know, you'd have 720p resolution at 96 frames per second. It blew, it blew everything out of the water, recorded on P2 memory cards that were super, super expensive. And uh, that camera got me through a lot of Canadian nationals. Um, fifth scale, na it got me through a lot of Canadian fifth scale nationals. I even went down to South Carolina and I did the East Coast nationals there with that camera and it was just it's just such an epic camera <laughs> five years and I got laid off at Much Music MTV Canada and got a nice fat severance check and I had to buy a camera for freelance. I jumped on the freelance, I was editing freelance, I was shooting freelance and I needed a pretty decent camera. So I picked up the Lumex GH4, also a Panasonic camera, also had variable frame rate and you could shoot 96 frames per second, but now at 1080p, all in a tiny uh, micro four thirds DSLR, or I guess it's like a mirrorless camera package. And it was just perfect. <laughs> What drew me to that camera was not only the slow motion capabilities, but it had really, really high bit rates for video, which means, you know, you had way better color grading options and the color, the, the images were much crisper and you got way more information out of each of those uh, slow motion frames and it would create these magical, magical slow motion shots. 
Not only that, but the Micro Four Thirds, I'm sure a lot of you guys are saying, well, why not go full frame? Um, there is a speed booster adapter for the Lumix GH series, and what it does is it actually focally reduces full frame lenses. Not complete full frame, but it does give you an extra stop of light. That means it's way better in low light situations. And you can also adapt pretty much any lens from like vintage Nikon lenses, vintage Canon lenses, is all the way to like more modern camera lenses that actually talk so the camera can actually talk to those lenses and do things like I mean poor autofocus for its time but it could do things like that you could change the aperture on those lenses um, that didn't have the aperture ring anyway I'm, I'm rambling the GH4 was a great camera it has shot maybe 99% of my YouTube channel is recorded on this GH4. I'm recording on it right now. It is a great, great camera. Now, moving on, it is now 2022, and I had to pick up a new camera. I'm tired of iPhones, slow motion shots, you know, schooling my GH4 that is now a solid, what, nine years old, probably, um, and I had to pick up another camera. But I had to keep it within my budget. I had to keep it within a budget restriction, um, and I couldn't spend three grand on a camera. So instead of waiting for the gh6 that's right it's coming out next month i jumped onto the gh5 which is already a fairly old camera i believe it's about four years old right now maybe even five years old but uh you know because there's a new camera coming out in the gh line a lot of the gh videographers are actually dumping the gh5 to buy the new gh6 and that means the cameras are getting way cheaper on the used market right so you know i jumped on it a buddy of ours a buddy of mine and valino's another camera guy who helps me out with the channel sometimes you know he uh, he asked his buddy and his buddy was selling one of these cameras. So this is it here. This is the GH5 body that I picked up. It isn't uh, perfect. So there's a little bit of damage on the shoe there, but it is a pretty minty camera. You can see it's low hours because it doesn't have a lot of scratches around this the tripod uh, hole here or whatever. Um, it is just a pretty, pretty sweet looking camera. Uh, and it does a lot of things that the GH4 can't do. The one thing that, the, that it can do that the GH4 can't do is it can do 4K at 60 frames per second, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, what it can do is slow motion in 4K. I can take that 60 frames per second and I can conform it down to 24p and I can also get audio from it because I forgot to mention that variable frame rates on the Panasonic cameras don't record audio. So all of you dudes that are like upset that I don't have natural uh, sound when I'm doing slow motion, that's probably why I've got a music, music playing. But you know, with this camera, this camera right here, you know, we've got the capabilities of doing 60 frames per second at 4K, which is absolutely glorious. And if I want to step it down to 1080p, I can do 120 frames per second variable down to 23.97. So you can get really dreamy 1080p footage with it, or you can do a 4K 60. But that's also not the main reason why I got this camera. I got this camera for another big reason. It spits out uh, 4k 60p 10-bit color um, through the HDMI so that is probably where it's the biggest game changer in my opinion you know you can't get that on very many cameras uh, especially not ones that cost you know a thousand US dollars right so these cameras right now are going for a thousand US dollars and uh, and that is quite the freaking bargain um, especially when you take into account that it can shoot 4k 60p 10 bit color um, what an awesome camera I can't wait to test it out but um, that's not all this camera needs a few accoutrements if there's needs to we need to have a few things to kind of kit this thing out to get it to the full potential that I want to for the channel 
there are certain things that I have to add to this setup that is going to make it even more ultimate. It's going to make it even cooler and uh, I'm going to kit this thing out and it's going to make it just a, be a cinematic beast. So let's, let's get to it, man. I got a box of goodies behind me here and we're going to grab the first one. Let's grab the first one. All right, Wicked, okay, here it is. All right, so this here, this is a small rig, is a really awesome company. It makes very affordable accessories for a lot of different cameras. If you're looking for like a cage or an HDMI, you know, clamp or whatever, this is the company to go with. Um, uh, at least, I mean, there's a lot of companies to go with, but this one seems to have a lot of the things that I needed. So I bought a whole bunch of stuff from Small Rig specifically for this camera here. We're going to switch to the top view. All right, so here's the GH5, and we got this box here. It says Small Rig, Small Rig, Big Dream. It's actually kind of a cool package design, man. I'm, uh, I'm really liking it. They always have such cool package design, these guys. Um, oh. Of course, gotta make sure I got my uh, hobby knife ready. Uh, yeah, let's open this thing up. All right, I'm just gonna throw, it's gonna throw the box uh, down there. Don't need it. All right, in this box, let's see what we got. All right, we got obviously an Allen wrench, which we're gonna need. And, uh, ooh, I hope it came with screws. Okay, the screws are in there. All right, so this is the first thing. This is a cage. Man, I hope you guys can see uh, with the light. Anyway, so this is the cage here. This cage, um, um, I mean, I don't particularly, there's a couple things that I really like about this cage. One, um, there's actually three points of contact for the cage. There's the, the, sh the shoe, the little uh, tripod mount hole at the bottom here and then there's these two small allen keys that screw into the sides of the camera so that's one main reason for buying this cage is just to have those three points of contact one thing that i'm not looking forward to is having um, a big piece of metal here this piece of metal um, right on the grip here I'm not looking forward to that and I'm actually kind of toying with the idea to cut the aluminum right here and cutting the aluminum right below the third point of contact there so I can still just use the you know the GH5's naked handle grip here I think that would be super cool so uh, and it would just be kind of like a custom custom half cage because they don't really make a half cage for this camera unless it has like another battery grip down here which I'm not into so awesome. So this cage goes onto this Lumex body pretty easily. I removed those, these little like, uh, I guess they're, they're for the um, neck uh, strap that nobody uses with these cameras. So I just took those off. You can see them here. And uh, now we've got the body with just these like holes here and they're, you know, all prepped and ready for, you know, these, these two screws on either side of the cage. So let's uh, use the included Allen wrench and uh, let's unscrew, Ooh, let's unscrew them prepping this cage for the camera. And we're gonna take the camera, we're gonna slide it into the cage and it fits with a nice with nice authority. Uh, it is kind of recessed here, and, uh, and the first thing I'm gonna screw in is the bottom. The bottom, actually, this is kind of super cool. Check this out. So there's this little freaking circle thing. It's magnetic, and uh, it is a key for the tripod uh, screw, which, which I think is super cool, because like, uh, you know, I'm always fumbling in my pocket look for, looking for a quarter. And that, uh, yeah, we don't have to do that with this thing. So that's huge. And I'm gonna tilt this thing forward. One great thing about the cage is that it protects from dings um, and dents. You know, it, it is now the furthest thing away. Like, it's the thing that uh, the camera rests on. And, uh, and, you know, hopefully it saves the camera from um, inevitable falls and uh, dings and dents, which, let's be real, I mean, it happens, it happens as careful as we want to be, as sometimes it happens. This is an aluminum cage, so I don't want to um, reef too hard on these little tiny hex bolts, but um, there it is. So there's the first 
accoutrement to the GH5 is this cage. The cage has a whole bunch of quarter taps. Um, you can see there's a whole bunch of mounting locations for other accessories, which I think, you know, is super cool. Um, get my focus there. Also has another hot shoe, um, hot shoe plate, which I guess isn't a, a hot shoe. I guess it's just a regular shoe here for a microphone. Um, and, uh, and it has a whole bunch of quarter taps there. And it also has an, a NATO, uh, NATO rail on the side here, which is an, uh, just like a form of a clamp. You can, you can like clamp cinema handles like these wooden, um, handles on the side of the camera, which I'm not doing. I'm trying to keep this thing as light as I can, but um, this is the first, you know, this is the first look um, of this camera, and it looks, I mean, it looks pretty fire with this cage. And, you know, I'm not too, ah, I mean, I don't like, I don't particularly like this big piece of metal um, here on the grip. Uh, it's definitely not very comfortable, so I may, you know, I may just like cut the aluminum there and maybe cut it. I don't want to like lose the protection on the battery door here. So I might cut it there and, uh, and cut it there, but I don't know. We'll, we'll like use it as it is for a while. And then if it really bugs me, that's what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this big metal chunk here. I don't know. I don't know, but it looks pretty freaking sweet. I am loving it so far. The cage looks super fire and, uh, yeah, man, it looks super cool. Like, look at this thing. Already looks more um, profesh and more serious, you know? Damn, that looks good. So, boom, let's do it. Anyway, let's 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 get to the next box, shall we? Let's get to the next box. And uh, we got another thing to unbox from Small Rig. All right. Here it is. Here's the next box. It is from Small Rig. As you can see, I bought a bunch of stuff from Small Rig because, like... They got the coolest stuff for the camera and uh you know unfortunately i totally broke the bank on this just setup but um hopefully it makes hopefully i keep saying hopefully it will make my footage look um a lot better and uh and it'll also be more fun for me which is the reason that i was doing this channel in the first place is to try to do cool cinematic storytelling and uh and look at me i can't even open this why can't even open the freaking box. All right, all right, wicked. This is it. Another bag, another box. I'm just gonna throw this box with the other box. There's gonna be a huge pile of boxes when I'm done right there. Um, whatever, lots of packaging, lots of freaking packaging. Here we go, let's see what's in here. So yeah, we got a whole bunch of uh, hardware and then we got ourselves this um, rather tiny, man, I don't know if you can see that, if I gotta focus it, maybe it's too dark a little bit, eh? Oh yeah, no, there it's better. All right, so this is just a handle. Um, what's cool about it is it actually has a Allen wrench magnetically uh, held to to it, so you can uh, you can actually like adjust any of the hardware that you have for your rig, and it kind of tucks away uh, in its little holder, and uh, it doesn't really get in the way. It is very small. It is not meant for really large hands. But, um, but I think this is going to be a perfect top handle um, for me. So uh, let's let's put it on the small rig cage and we'll see we'll see how it how it works, man. Yeah, loving this thing. It's uh, it's just so small and understated. You know, everybody gets these like massive handles. I'm trying to keep this thing rather compact, and uh, and I think I think we're doing it. It's you know the whole the whole thing is to try to keep this thing light. And uh, I mean, I'm going to be putting a whole bunch of stuff on here and I don't want to do just, I don't want anything excessive. I don't need a follow focus. I don't need all this stuff. I just need to be able to manhandle the camera and get it where, you know, pointing where I need it to be pointing uh, in the most comfortable way. So I feel like this is a very good addition to this setup. Yeah. So here's the handle here. Uh, this is the camera with the cage. And now we're gonna basically bolt this guy right freaking there. Um, let's get on it. I uh, got the bag of hardware. Nice, of course, you gotta get the MCD screwdriver, which is the, you know, hex driver, which is like the Cadillac of screwdrivers. Uh, boom, all right, wicked, let's look at it. 
Uh, I'm gonna put the hardware back in the bag so I don't lose it. Also, maybe I'll put these guys in there too. Not that I'll ever use these things for any reason. But, uh, but there we go. All right, so we got ourselves a awesome uh, caged GH5. You know, it's got a top handle for those low shots or, you know, if you just wanna put it down somewhere, uh, you got a nice handle there and everything kind of is held together super, super nicely. And I'm into it, man. That looks really great. Man, does it ever. All right, let's, let's get the next box, shall we? We got this little tiny guy next. This little tiny guy has a really awesome swivel mount in it. So, man, it's hard to talk. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a talker. I'm not a talker. Love is blind. Um, all right, let's open this bag and see what we got. I feel like we can move this here. Get this right in the center. Awesome, another bag. I'm gonna have so many Ziploc bags by the end of this. Uh, these ones have holes in them though, so you can't really put like screws or anything in them, which is fine, whatever. Tons, tons of bags. All good, all good. Here we go, all right. Here's the next piece for the rig. This is a tiny swivel um, uh, like adapter. We're gonna screw this to the front of the handle. Um, man, all this stuff is designed super well. Uh, and there's like a hole in this, so you can actually like put an Allen key through it and you can actually like uh, get quite a bit more torque on these things to tighten them super, super tight. Ah, there we go, so that's super tight. Um, yeah, and so I mean, it's loose right now, but we're gonna, we're gonna tighten this up so it's like a good friction, friction hold. Uh, yeah, that's great. And I believe that's the right size for this little Allen key on, on the side here. So if, if we do need to change sort of the, the, the tightness, uh, we can do that. All right, so there is the GH5 with the grip and this uh, swivel mount. Now let's get to uh, the best part of this whole setup. All right, bam, this little guy here. This is the Atomos Ninja 5. Not only is this an external monitor, like a larger five inch uh, monitor, but it also does HDR. So it can do HDR and um, it also records 4K 60p at 10 bit. Um, in ProRes. So I, I, I mean, I'm, I know I'm probably talking to people who aren't like camera gear guys or video camera gear guys, but um, the big thing about this is that it's using a codec that isn't uh, more concerned about compression than picture quality. So, you know, this thing is super sweet because like, you know, you, not only can you monitor a lot of things, you can do waveform vector scopes. You can actually see the color image or the color profile, the IREs, the luminance values of your image. You can tell if you're properly exposed and you can also check your focus peaking. So it'll show you like these little, uh, these little like bright colored pixels along where the focus of the image is. So that is super huge. I'm uh, like really, really excited about this. Uh, it's gonna be great to not look at this little tiny screen on the side of your camera and uh and yeah man let's look at it because like man i'm so into it i'm so freaking excited about it um let's see here it's uh it's quite a like quite a fancy box there's actually some like rare earth magnets in the lid and uh, oh here no we should do this a little better than that man come on what are you doing let's get in the middle let's open this up and Boom, there it is. That there, I'm gonna pull it out of this box. Man, close it. Yeah, the first thing about this device that I notice is that it is cold to the touch, which means this whole outer um, enclosure is made out of aluminum, which is kind of an upgrade for Atomos um, recorders. I do know that they had a larger like Inferno, I think it was called the Inferno and it was all plastic and a lot of videographers were complaining about how, uh, you know, how it would, 
you know, it, it wouldn't, uh, yeah, it just w wouldn't handle the abuse of like regular cinema. So uh, just like recording and stuff. So here on the back, you can see, yes, this is a uh, SAT up um, SSD slot. So this is where you would put your SSD media. So yeah, this thing doesn't record on SD cards. It needs way faster media for that. So you know, that's why this thing is so awesome is because uh, it can take massive bit rates, um, just massive amounts of information on a hard drive, a super fast hard drive, which is also f super fast to unload. Um, here we have an MP7, MP4, MP7, I can't remember. Uh, MP7, MP7 battery. So that this is like a Sony, like a standard Sony battery that fits on the back here. And uh, so it does need like external power. And then on the side here, we've got an HDMI in and an HDMI out. And on this side, we've got, uh, you know, a, a microphone, a th you know, 3.5 mil microphone and a headphone jack so you can monitor and the power button. This thing is super sweet. I'm gonna leave this on for a sec cause I'm gonna get this thing on the camera. Uh, let me zoom out first a little bit. Um, yeah, man. Ooh, I should have been shooting this in 4K. I don't know why I didn't. Because uh, then I could punch in and I could like crop out what's on my desk. Uh, this thing keeps moving. All right, wicked. So now let's screw this thing um, right here on the top mount of the camera. Or uh, all right, now I'm going to tighten up this freaking monitor mount. This is so sick. All right, this thing's gonna get too big to get into the shot. Oh, and it is a bit front heavy, that's too bad. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure out something about that. Anyway, so here is the camera as it is right now, which is super huge. Uh, look at this thing. So the cool thing about this is, uh, you know, we can add a handle right here and uh, and we can like use our shoulders to brace the camera. Man, something I totally forgot to mention about the GH5 is that it uses a five axis sensor stabilization. So for handheld shots, this thing, they call this camera the gimbal killer. I mean, it's not gonna be as good as a gimbal, but um, but a lot of people prefer the handheld of this thing than like the floaty side to side weirdness of a gimbal. So, but this thing looks super sick. Look at it, this giant monitor on top with a handle. We can do low shots. We can like move this screen down a little bit and uh, and we can like, you know, follow along. Uh, it's super sweet. We're probably gonna get it really dirty and it's not gonna look like this for long. But, uh, but man, is that super sweet. I'm so into it. So let's uh, switch camera shots. I'm gonna put this down for a second and we're gonna get to our next box. All right, the next box here, we got ourselves this Atom X SSD. So this is a 500 gigabyte SSD. Um, the cool thing about this, this whole, this all came as a kit. This is the reason I ended up going this route is because they actually came out with a new version of the Atomos Ninja 5. It's called the Ninja 5 Plus, and it does 120 frames per second at 4K, which is all, what all the new generation of cameras is, are gonna be doing. That seems a little overkill to me. For me, it would be way more money. You know that that would bump up this unit here. You know the Plus is like another thousand dollars or like eight hundred dollars and uh and the new camera would have been three grand so like you know i'm trying to keep this whole rig like just under three thousand dollars and i think i bear like i think i cracked it though i cracked it a little bit it's definitely not as cheap as i wanted it to be but it is definitely cheaper than uh any other setup that has this freaking amount of capability i guess this is a good way to put it Anyway, let's open this thing up. Uh, let's see here. We demand higher tech. That's why we challenge the status quo. Being and breaking technological boundaries to design and engineer unique products. Whatever. I know you're still super expensive though, dudes. Um, I do have a couple of caddies coming that uh, a few caddies like this that you can put little M3, um, you know, SATA solid state, uh, you know, cards that you would put in like a laptop. Um, and, uh, and you know, 
This thing just came as a kit, right? It came uh, with batteries, it came with 500 gigabyte drive, which is actually quite heavier than I thought it would be. But like, let's like load it in here just so we can see what it looks like. Um, yeah, I'm so, I'm so freaking excited about it. Let's move the box out of the way. Uh, dang, okay. So uh, there's the SATA. So this just slides right in there. Bang, there we go. So that is um, the monitor. Wow, the monitor is a bit heavier than the camera. Uh, although I don't think I have a battery in here. Don't have a battery in the camera, so that's gonna change things. Let's put a battery in there. Boom, all right, so let's put a battery in here. Slam, there is the battery. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what it looks like right now as it is. I gotta still put a battery in this guy, so let's do that. Um, yeah, this came as a kit, so it came with a bunch of Atomos branded, you know, they're actually Sony batteries, but uh, MP7 batteries originally made for Sony cameras, um, but they seem like quite a good universal battery like lithium ion i believe it's 5200 milliamp hours this battery so it should last i don't know these things apparently eat batteries so i have two of them which should be hopefully be enough for a shoot day there we go there's the battery on here man it isn't light that's for sure now i understand why people put rails on the bottom to stop it from tipping forward and uh also to kind of balance out the camera. Like the, the thing that I'm noticing about this setup right now, I mean, there's no lens on it right now, but you know, even with putting a lens on here, yeah, it's gonna hopefully balance out a little bit, but, um, but that's, you know, that's the setup there. So let's, um, yeah, what are we gonna do? So now there's like one, one thing left, actually two things left that I got in this kit. And uh, the first thing, uh, the first thing I got was this uh, high speed uh, HDMI cable. It has to be a high speed cable because of the amount of data that we're putting through the HDMI. Uh, it has to, yeah, it has to be a high speed cable. So this one was recommended, although Atomos has their own branded one that's like $60. This one was only like $19. So I'm hoping that it handles the 4K at 60. Hold on, we should go to the above cam. What am I doing? Oh, I'm doing this off camera. There it is right there. It says uh, 4K HDR. It says high speed HDM cable with ethernet. So um, that's, pr that's pretty great. That's gonna work with triggering the camera. So when you hit record on the camera, it will trigger the Atomos. Ooh, it comes with a little silk bag, how fancy pantsy. And then we got ourselves this freaking amazing HDMI cable that's kind of like thin. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's less bulky than uh, the Atomos versions of coiled ones. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to like plugging this all in. So let's freaking do it. I'm gonna have to grab a lens to put on the front of this thing, but I'm cool with that. So there's a little door here on the side. I might have to go back to small rig and um, purchase a uh, just an HDMI lock for this cable. So when you when you hit it, when you hit it, I mean the keyword there is when you hit it, you don't end up damaging the camera. But that's another thing that uh, you know. That's another thing that uh, I didn't mention about the GH5 is that it does have a full size HDMI port. Um, on the side of the camera and uh, and that is a glorious thing because it is much more reliable than a micro HDMI port, although not as awesome as SDI, but what, what can you do? If you want SDI like a barrel connector, you know, you're gonna have to get a camera that is just like way more money. So this is, uh, this, this will have to do, this will have to do. So let's plug um, the HDMI in here, we might have to unplug these cables uh, just because we need to like figure out what to do with this like, routing a little bit. So I feel like we'll probably end up routing it like this uh, somehow. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We got zip ties. We're RC guys. We got zip ties and things <laughs> to like help help out. But yeah, that's the rig there, man. Oof. That is crazy, man. Let's put a lens on it. Let's put a lens on it and let's uh, let's start her up, man. I'm so excited about it. Damn, damn, okay. I'm just gonna lean this on the ground here. 
on the ground, on the thing. Oh, geez. I'm going nuts. Uh, let's see, where's the speed booster? There's one with a speed booster. Okay, let's do this one. All right, so I'm just going to use this mechanical vintage Nikkor lens. This is a 28 millimeter uh, for full frame, um, you know, 2.8 lens. It is like a vintage lens, and I freaking love how, like, so, you know, how soft you can make it, how that, that like, more, that, like, shallow depth of field that you can get on these lenses. It's uh, super, super cool. Uh, I mean, that's the great thing about picking up vintage lenses is that you can get this lens for like two hundred dollars, you know. But it's a completely manual lens, so you can't control you can't control like aperture through the camera, which is fine, or use any autofocus at all. But I don't use autofocus generally, although I want to kind of start. All right, so here is pretty much what it would what it will look like like this is a fully rigged um, camera it's got some weight to it so i'm gonna need to get a, like a handle here i kind of feel like i'm gonna get one of these like left-handed wooden handles to just like be able to suck this thing to my chest and like follow uh follow you know follow stuff or like do b-roll and uh you know or or not i don't know i don't know uh, this might end up becoming a problem. I ended up buying a whole bunch of more stuff, but let's just wait until the sting of this kind of passes because good God, man. That's it for this episode of K-Pop RC. This is the new sick rig that is going to shoot all of the next, hopefully, five years of K-Pop RC videos. Uh, and yes, I know the GH6 is coming out like next month and it can it just dwarfs these specs, but for the price of this, camera um, and the output to YouTube that it's going to be doing. This is perfect for me and it is one third of the price of the new GH6. Although I mean GH6, global shutter. If you don't know what it is, Google it. Uh, 6K at 60p, uh, 4K at 120. It has just like it dwarfs this camera, but um, this camera dwarfs my setup that I'm shooting with right now. So, you know, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're always going to be chasing that next technological advance, and I don't have the cash to spend money on new equipment. So if you want to help out the channel, um, if you want to help me out now that I'm like invested some more cash into the channel, then please visit kpoprc.com. Pick yourself up some stickers uh, for every seven dollars you spend on uh, kpoprc.com. It enters you to win a raffle to win. Uh, Zero Flux Hilux Cage, 3D printed Zero Flux Hilux Cage. Uh, stay tuned on kpoprc.com. We've got some new stuff coming. Um, we're gonna be, uh, yeah, we're gonna be resin. We're gonna be doing two-part epoxy uh, molds for a bunch of LS pokies, um, LS motor pokies for Lexan bodies. What else we got? We got a bunch of uh, light buckets that I'm sending to Cardinal Racing for the XR5, the MCD Max XR5. Just a whole bunch of stuff coming. Um, and uh, yeah, the future is bright. We're gonna use this thing to shoot a whole bunch of new videos. So I better get freaking to it. But um, man, so stay tuned, man. Let me know in the comments if you see a difference in quality on the next batch of videos because this is gonna be the rig that shoots them. Cheers to beers, bros. See you guys on Talk Can Tuesday. Awesome. Later. <laughs>